Thank you. I should probably do a stand-up comedian show to keep you on your toes, but anyhow, I'll uh, try to keep it brief and interesting as, as I can. Uh, I recall uh, some, some years back uh, when I listened to uh, Myklebus here. Uh, I started my career as a research scientist uh, in the space shuttle program in the U.S. And if you recall back, uh, some of you were present, others have seen it in, on TV, uh, President Kennedy stating in the early 60s that they wanted to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. I mean, I think that, it, that envisions uh, what we need today. It was optimism, it was uh, a young president at the time, it represented youth. And the third factor was actually competition, because he wanted to be there before the Russians. Uh, or the Soviet Union at that, uh, at that time, even though it mainly happened in, in Russia. So, uh, so I think that's a, that's a core factor, and I share uh, Myklebust's uh, way of optimism in that sense. We started this session today with uh, one of my employees, Per Sonberg, and the, the, one of the reasons that we employed Per was to, to have a, sort of a, an expert within the field of sustainability and link, link us into the world uh, to the, to, the, to the business community that actually is working in this field. Uh, if I look at, uh, at the CSR agenda, what PEER represents is actually the commercial part of our business within sustainability, where we actually sell services and, and work with other companies uh, on sustainability projects. Uh, to, just to mention a couple of initiatives that are, we naturally are involved in as a consulting company where integration and making consortiums are, are an important thing and what they do is, is the smart city programs that actually utilizes all the nine pillars of, uh, of what Pierre mentioned this morning uh, where you naturally have to uh, have several companies and the government and NGOs involved in order to reach the goals that are set to improve the way the world works and lives in, in the cities where a majority of the 9 billion people will live in 2050. So, uh, so that is a, a particular area and, and I think that uh, since we've had uh, the former Prime Minister of, of the Netherlands here, Smart City Amsterdam is one of the bigger programs we are running. We had uh, the former Prime Minister of Finland and Turku is also a, a city where we're working uh, these days to test out new concepts. And uh, I'm pleased to say that also here in Norway with Oslo and in particular now with the focus in Bærum and what the Ministry of, uh, Ministry is doing in, uh, Ministry of Environment is focusing on, on the cities of, of the future. These programs will be uh, important in order to uh, improve how the cities will work. And uh, I think also the component of the people component is uh, certainly important there. And then to mention another pillar, uh, being a consultant company, we need to walk the talk. So uh, and the environment part is important for us. And if we look at, then at how we are doing that, we've set targets to reduce our carbon footprint by 40% by 2015. Uh, and that is sort of uh, to show that it's possible, even though we're not producing much brain power is, is, is something, but, uh, but I mean, we travel a lot, we have buildings around the globe, uh, and we're using then external rankings to a large extent to see how we compare between each other, and uh, develops new ways of working that actually then can be utilized in cooperation with the clients we're working with. So I think reducing travel, uh, in order to do that, you need to work more virtually and be efficient in the way you operate in virtual environments. Uh, which is, uh, is a good way of uh, looking into the future and reach the, the zero energy target that, uh, that uh, Per talked about this morning. Um, so uh, then walking the talk internally, that means uh, using the ISO certification of 14001 on our own buildings around the globe, competing between the different 50, in the 52 countries and 120, 52 countries where we have buildings, and offices and 120 countries where we operate is actually setting up competition between the countries to be most energy efficient both among the employees and also the way we utilize our buildings. The last part I want to mention is related to our broader corporate citizenship program. Uh, being a company of 250,000 employees now uh, makes it uh, quite hard to, uh, to sort of set some common targets, 
and goals, but uh, and get everybody to, to agree on that. So we anchored around uh, the UN Millennium Goals back in 2009 to set a target to equip 250,000 people with the skills to get a job or build a business. And in order to operationalize, operationalize that, we needed cooperating partners, and that is mainly the NGOs and the non-profit organizations in order to be able to run projects around the globe. I've held the position as the global director for corporate citizenship in Accenture. And uh, to reach that target, to skill 250,000 people by 2015 as part of the Millennium Goal, has been a challenging target. And as analytical consultants, we are then breaking that down uh, to targets for 15 regions where we operate, Nordic being one of them. And then everybody comes up with ideas in order to, uh, to build up to that target. And I'm pleased to say that we will uh, certainly reach that target within this, uh, this calendar year, I guess. So we will set, have to set new, new target in that respect. This has uh, sort of moved our people in one common direction. And, and we've seen a lot of interesting projects my three-year budget in this area has been $100 million, combining cash that we give to the NGOs, but also uh, time that we do. We set up pro bono projects together with the NGOs. Uh, I spoke yesterday uh, at the session here uh, about our 10-year cooperation with Save the Children, or mostly our, our local projects. Uh, but I think the, uh, the fact that we are then running global programs, also with companies, with NGOs like, uh, like SAVE. Uh, we have other cooperating partners like the International Red Cross, PLAN, YBI, and I was, uh, Vivek Amin Watson mentioned uh, uh, Young Entrepreneurship, Junior Achievement. We were also uh, working with them globally. I was in China last, uh, last year, where we were actually training at 28 universities together with JA training uh, young Chinese students in entrepreneurship. Uh, that is not very uh, <laughs> the thing you would find the most of uh, at that level in, in China. So they really appreciate the ability to, to be trained in entrepreneurship. We also had the cooperation with, with Virke and Young Entrepreneurship on, uh, on the competition here in Norway last year. That was uh, on the high school level. Uh, Enterprise Without Borders, where the young students actually set up companies across borders. Uh, Norwegian students and others in, in Europe cooperate with companies in, and students in Africa in order to import goods across the borders and learn a lot uh, by setting up those uh, companies. And I think uh, this mix of, of having opportunities for my own employees around the globe is important for employee engagement. It is, uh, as was stated earlier, important for a knowledge-based company to engage the young generation. And we see that a lot of our people also engage in volunteering activities. Those will, of course, be different in different parts of the world. You will have volunteering week in Brazil, working in the faelas. That's not the same as you would do here in Norway, where you mainly work with, with immigrants, with the asylum see seekers in the, in the camps, different projects that we have together with them. So I think this is uh, a matter of engaging people and uh, creating optimism. And of course, I, I agree with, uh, with the former Hydro CEO that uh, I think we will resolve most of the problems. But, but uh, I think cooperation is then uh, uh, pretty necessary in order to, to get there. I think paired with agreement be but that we had expected that the takeoff of the sustainability practice would have been a bit steeper. But we now see a lot of, uh, of good movement and uh, we continue to be optimists. Thank you very much. I'll stop there. So. Thank you very much.